Welcome to your C++ tutorial series. This video is dedicated to the concept of structs. Now, this is the first video where we're going to be talking about some details of object-oriented programming, but this is not specific to just structs. This will also apply to classes. So if classes are more what you're familiar with, don't worry, that's what we're going to get into as well in this video. Now this is the concept, this is the theory. In the upcoming video we're going to create a struct and eventually we'll create a class. Fortunately in C++, structs and classes are essentially the same thing. Now do me a favor and check out our sponsor Embarcadero Rad Studio. Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ codebase and deploy to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. All right, so in C++, a struct and a class will do the same thing. So they're both going to create an object. So the difference between a class and a struct is mainly conventional. They can be used to do the same exact thing, but people choose to use structs for generally smaller structures and classes for more larger structures. So you could use a struct to create the basically the blueprint for a person, for example, and then very easily that can be converted to a class. So don't be caught up in struct versus class. I will show you the syntactical differences in this video and the upcoming videos. Very, very easy. So let's get into that. What is the difference syntactically between a class and a struct? Well, it has to do with what are known as access modifiers. When you create a class or a struct, the things inside of it are known as its members. So assume this box is a class or a struct. Well, these members will have access modifiers, and there's three possible options. We have public, private, and protected. Now, protected's really not going to come up until we talk about inheritance, so don't even worry about that right for now. Focus on public and private. The difference between public and private is that when we create an object from the class, the, the public members can be accessed on that object. The private members will not be visible and can only be accessed within that class definition. So when you are defining this box, you can work with those private members, but once we create an actual instance of this, so let's say this was a user, when we create a user such as user1, we can only now have access to the public members. It kind of makes sense in theory, but it definitely will make sense once we do the hands-on stuff in the next video. Protected is very similar to private, but it will extend down to any class or structure that inherits from it. So again, that's not going to make a whole lot of sense until we talk about inheritance, but protected will come up in the future. Now the only difference when it comes to structs and classes is that structs, the members, are by default public. So struct with classes, they are by default private class. Public struct, private class. Now you can change the access modifiers for the members, but you have to specify that. So to do that, you would just say private and then put a colon and then anything inside the class that comes after that private will have the private access modifier. So I'm pretty sure that is the only difference you have to worry about Classes are by default private, structs are by default public. That's it. Other than that, everything is exactly the same. They're both passed by value, they both can contain methods and data members, they can both use inheritance, pretty much everything is exactly the same. The end result is always going to be an object. So in C++, the difference between a struct and a class is very similar. They're very close together. The only difference is the default access modifier. In other languages, this distance is much farther. So if you're going from C++ to other languages or you're coming to C++ from other languages, you might not be used to the idea that structs and classes are very similar. You might expect them to be very different. For example, in C Sharp, structs are value types. Classes are reference types. C++, they're the same thing essentially. Other languages, not so much. So do keep that in mind. Now by convention, structs inside of C++, people will often use them for plain old data 
structs, so pods. And what that means is by convention, they are only really used to contain data members, meaning variables. So inside of that struct definition, you can put variables such as int x, but you can also put methods. But in general, you will try to avoid any kind of functionality inside of a struct and just use it to store data such as a coordinate x or a coordinate y. <laughs> very simple, variable-based things. So that is what pod stands for. You might see that when you're doing research on the internet. That's purely a convention thing and I would recommend adhering to that. So the next video, we are going to create a struct. We're going to instantiate it into an object. And then in the upcoming videos, we're going to take that and basically convert it to classes and add more juice and substance to it. So it should be pretty fun. I'm really excited. Hopefully you guys are as well. Please be sure to subscribe if you've enjoyed the content and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.